you want to introduce yourself? Real yeah, real? I'm Brian Miller. Leslie Clapp. All right. And these guys run a, a company called Neuro Scouting. Yep. You want to tell us a little quickly about that? Yeah, so we basically create, well, both of us are neuroscientists, and we basically create brain training software for athletes. Right on. Yeah, that's, so that's why I'm talking to you guys about the addiction of games, since mm -hmm. you um, have some familiarity with uh, video games as well as what actually goes on in your brain while mm -hmm. playing these things. So um, I was just asking, Brian, if you'd read the blog post I wrote and you said you did and so yeah yeah so I mean I was very interested um, in reading it in terms of uh, the sort of confluence of the psychological component to the actual gameplay and actually what that is doing in the brain so uh, obviously a lot of the things you talked about in terms of the design of games things like timing and you know things like uh, your ability to compete or have social engagement with, with it. it really plays on a lot of these psychological components uh, obviously um, but these have a root in the brain as well, largely by how they sort of play around or, or sort of influence reward centers in the brain. So um, in terms of very addicting games, uh, there's actually neurotransmitters that are released by these different events that you, you laid out there. I mean, when you've got a sort of a thrill of competition or the ability to sort of um, very rapidly accomplish a sophisticated goal through whether it be cooperation amongst a social network or just your own brilliance and and uh, I, what was the was it what's the one minute one the one minute game oh were, bejeweled. bejeweled yeah that, yeah, that yeah, one's yeah. ridiculous so, yeah. I, yeah, and I think that's I think that's the key is like you know every time even those near misses every time the brain is kind of stimulated whether it's through success or through failure the brain is really changing and kind of is being driven into that, it wants to get to that state again and, and have success. I mean, the brain really is a success-driven machine, and so yeah. every time, as you were talking about those near misses, it's like, you see it, and it's almost, and then, no, you miss, and you're like, shoot, I'm definitely doing that again, because I was so close. And yeah, it's true, but Jewel definitely has that element to it, you know, where you, you, you want to play it again, because you didn't quite get the score you wanted, or right. you haven't beat your friends, you know, the blitz one, so. Right, and that's a huge thing with the waiting, right? It's, yeah. Is, how much time it's going to take for you to get that reward again, right? Yeah. And that's why the shorter games have that kind of driving factor in that, like, the brain is constantly like, yeah. it's only a minute, I'll just go for it. <laughs> Whereas if it's going to be a two-hour thing, the brain's going to be like, well, in comparison to what else I, you know, that's when you start to think about. Yeah, is it really worth doing that right now or yeah. whatever, yeah. Yeah, definitely. and in terms of, you know, just going back a little bit to the reward stuff, so the brain really drives a lot of reward from either violations or sort of fitting of predictions. So, uh, you know, obviously one extreme case would be slot machines in Vegas. Why are these so addictive? Because essentially you get this unexpected major reward and your your brain is just sort of like loaded with dopamine, which is one of the main main neurotransmitters that underlie mm -hmm. reward and sort of some of these feelings of elation that drive um, video game video game, not necessarily addiction, but also just addictive video games that sort of responses really to your dopamine system shooting out right. in response to that reward. So, so repetition you think is a big part of it. I mean that's one of the key elements that I picked up on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so on these longer games uh, it seems that they tend to kind of um, focus a little bit more on the, the idea of exploration that, yeah, and like the say. next thing you never know what you might actually that's find. That's the thing. It's like that yeah. novelty which is kind of you're you're exploring along and all of a sudden there's new things opening up to you which at the brain level is very interesting that's where you store like in situations of novelty the brain is kind of in this state of like wow this is amazing when it know kind of what Brian is connect, connected to what Brian was saying mm -hmm. is when you know what's coming up next it's not as interesting as when you don't know what's coming up and that's where that exploration really takes in a lot of very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of it, it, as these things, these games sort of unfold. I mean, it's almost the same reason we like a story. As you sort of get acquainted with a certain situation, the story. The first time you you learned about that, it was very novel and, and it's very rewarding. It unlocked the next level. But then you're at that for a while, and it just gets to be the standard thing, and you're looking at that next sort of novelty that'll really drive the reward. So, a lot of these different things just really are are very fundamentally related in what can drive. The brain's reward mm -hmm. centers to. So, yeah. what, what games do you guys find addicting? Uh, 
Um, I think you, yeah. Um, I I think I all growing up I was very into sports related games. I was, I was very into competition and sort of the novelty that that would provide. Mm-hmm. And sort of being able to I had a younger brother so go head and head against him and just sort of those sports games are always very addicting to me. Also, just the ability in in perfecting your skill in those games and sort of setting goals to to new levels of performance in those. And, and so I always found those. Uh, but on the other hand, more recently with sort of the more rapid fire games, I mean, I've gotten really big into sort of rapid word jumble and things like that that yeah. you can do on the, on the subway, but they really sort of have a really quick rate of return in terms of... That's cool. I would say mine are definitely all infrared five games. <laughs> <laughs> the Star Wars do. trench run, right? Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, it's, well, speaking of uh, business, uh, you guys uh, um, create games which are not necessarily supposed to be addictive, but they're supposed to enhance the player's uh, hand-eye coordination. Are, are you looking for a way to make this fun and something that the, the athletes would want to continue to try and get? And have you found the games that you guys are putting together for this uh to be kind of have those elements as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think just challenge in, in many ways. I mean, I think at, no matter what game level you're talking about, the harder a game gets, the more kind of engaged you become and more motivated you become in trying to succeed. And so as the game kind of gets harder, as you get better, those are the games that become just inherently more addictive because your brain is like, I want to succeed in this case. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I mean... The, what we always sort of say is we think about the engaged brain as the learning brain. So in terms, in terms of actually having any sort of uh, game that's that's aiming to sort of improve brain function, having them actually be in a state of of engagement, whether that be through the comp- competition, whether it be through these other gameplay factors, is really big. Okay. Yeah. And be careful of addictive games. Also, there's obviously a whole slew of literature that's showing. People, that it's a serious problem, that it's right? A serious it can, problem it can, and that it can actually yeah. cause death, and you know, it death. could cause death. There's reports <laughs> of, of people playing for so long that they become either so fatigued and dehydrated that they die, go into cardiac arrest. I mean, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, all right, <laughs> that's pretty serious. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, or get so involved in their own little character world that they end up kind of doing things like jumping off of buildings and and saying I'm going to go and like live in heaven with my players that just yeah world of warcraft or yeah. something right yeah I know there's a youtube video of that kid freaking out when his parents canceled his account and yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I mean if, if, if it causes somebody to get that insane yeah, uh, yeah I mean you can definitely tell it has and, and the reason for these extreme cases are just like for you know any sort of substance related addiction it, it's play, it's playing and tweaking with the same same yeah, it's dopamine reward systems. Reward yeah. systems and, so, I mean, yeah. the, the underlying ideology of these problems are very similar. But these, these are also extreme cases. Obviously, games can be very addictive and they can be fun. And, you yeah. know, you can play and it can also be applied to something good. You know, yeah. I mean, just because they're addictive, that's like you said, that's engaging a person. Definitely. Right? Definitely. And then in your case, you're trying to make them better athletes. Uh, in other cases, you maybe just trying to keep them into it and having fun. Mm-hmm. But there's certainly games that do increase your intellect. I mean, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, word just word like, games and puzzles. and Yeah, yeah it's, it's, no, it's no different from an active, yeah. engaging classroom that, you know, like, mm-hmm. it, you could have a certain way of teaching that is very engaging. Um, and it could include some of these same things, like introducing rewards or, you know, having storytelling to relate concepts, things, whatever it might be, it, it has this effect of, of improving uh, learning process. Right on. So any... Uh, Closing remarks on addiction and games and play infrared five brass monkey baby. <laughs> yeah. I'd say one one interesting point, which which is just like a, another level of all this, is that there's a lot of individual variability in what individuals find as this engaging engaging our addictive property. For example, there's some people that aren't as into these sort of longer drawn out strategy games or things like mm-hmm. that versus the more sort of quick hits of these really quick games and just like uh, I mean it's just fundamental to what each individual is finding rewarding so it's while there's basic principles um, across all these different things in terms of driving reward and things like that there's also a lot of individual variability and that's why you see different 
individuals drawn to different types of games. Right on. Well, that actually brings up something pretty interesting, too. I mean, um, it seems like a lot of games are... Well, let's take uh, these social networking games like Farmville and stuff. Those seem to appeal to women more than men. And is it that something you guys have found, too, that well, maybe women athletes think a little bit differently than men? Or there's a really tough one to... That at yeah. This point, but, yeah. But I think there are gender differences in what, what Brian's discussing is that there are, you know, there have been found to be gender de- differences as well as, you know, age differences. As well. mm-hmm. And cultural differences yeah, as well. Yeah, cultural. Yeah. yeah that, you look at the inter- international fabric of, of what games are big hits in different spots, it's not always that a engaging game is going to translate. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, and they're, they're into some really interesting games over in Korea, mm-hmm. I know, and it's Starcraft. part of a whole culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Actions per second instead of like, yeah, there's pretty... Uh, you know, that's exactly. It. It's not that that game wouldn't translate here. It's just that you know, yeah. maybe cultural factors. That I wonder if they're in the Farmville over there. They yeah. probably hate that or something. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever it may be, you know, there's th- these sort of rewards um, are different for each individual. But the, yep. you know, as you say, what you broke but down. But there's is, a cultural and also probably gender mm-hmm. um, kind of uh, preferences, I suppose. I mean, mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. So what you know. But I did, you know, I really like the blog because it sort of laid out some of the most common sort of things yeah. across games. Yeah. Really did you Did you guys notice if I missed anything on that? Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. It was pretty. Uh, I mean, I was just thinking it was pretty hard to pin them down to mm-hmm. seven key That's elements. The point. But, I know. Um, I think you. I think you got the main ones definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, thank you. Uh, Wes and Brian. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Pleasure.